Hi and welcome to NIWFA Lockdown, a show which goes behind the scenes to catch up with the players and the teams from across the NIWFA to see how they're dealing with the current situation dealing with lockdown. Our special guests this evening are the ladies from Antrim Rovers. You'll probably think it's a brand new name, brand new club, but as you'll see as we go on, it's a lot of familiar faces. And hey, let's not waste any more time and let's catch up immediately with the girls from Antrim Rovers. So I'm um, joined this evening by the ladies from Antrim Rovers Football Club. No doubt a lot of people will think, well, this must be a brand new club. However, they're probably seeing faces already and thinking a lot of familiar faces. So Donna, if I can start with you, what's the story behind Antrim Rovers? Um, well, last year we obviously, unfortunately, uh, Sydney Corner relegated. So we've been thinking about it for a few years about how we can sustain the club going forward. Um, we've never really had the support and it's always been sort of me and the team. Um, so we had an opportunity to have a chat with a local club, Antrim Rovers. They have a great grassroots and um, more importantly for us, an under 15 girls team. So for us then, it was a, a chat with them and we were very supportive. They were very much on board and it was something that we thought, you know what, let's, let's take, a, take a jump and, and go for it. And so far so good with it? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the girls who were at Chimney Corner last year and the years before have stuck with it. The senior girls, you know, they're they're very much on board with it. And it was, it was something that I wanted us as a group to make a decision on. Um, with that, obviously, we've got new players coming and um, being a new team in the area um, has been, uh, I would say, maybe a step up for us because a lot of, a lot of players maybe would never come to Chimney Corner before or not come to Antrim Rovers on the basis that the club itself is a, is a family-run grassroots sort of club and it is renowned. Last time I spoke to you, I'm sure it was towards the end of last season, you, you were adamant at that stage you were going to retire at the end of the season and stop coaching, but here <laughs> you are, you're still at it. I know, I know. It look, looks like it might be another season <laughs> if we all stay in lockdown. But, you know, um, we, have a, we have another coach in, Jin, with us at the minute. Um, he sort of was coaching in England. He's over here for a time at the moment. And he's very much has have us taking girls sort of futsal. And it's just sort of came hand in hand. So, you know, the, the, the stepping stones there, where there's other coaches in Antrim Rovers. And this year was about us maybe sort of, coming on, on board and, and um, building relationships with the other coaches and the other teams. You could go through yeah. the season unbeaten, you realise that, of course? Yeah, absolutely. There's <laughs> a record for the records. <laughs> I'm going to talk <laughs> with the girls now, so I'll start with Aaron Cooper. You've brought my two Aaron's in tonight, so we'll start with Aaron Cooper. <laughs> Aaron, we wee bit behind the scenes. I understand you're working in the, the Northern Trust at the moment, is that right? What, what's your job there? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm a mental health nurse in the inpatient unit down in the Causeway Hospital. So it's business as usual at the moment. Has it been sort of, I'm well, not sure the right word, stressful. I know it's bound to be stressful, but has it had a big impact in your actual job? It has had an impact. Um, I think because of lockdown at the minute, people are more isolated. Um, there's a lot of fear and anxiety about it. So that is impacting um, people needing to come into hospital and seeking support. Um, so, yeah, um, although we don't have so many physical health problems with the COVID, uh, there's still risks there at the moment, yeah. Okay, well, as, as ever, we'd just like to say thanks to everybody in the NHS for all the work they're doing. It really is appreciated by everybody. I know you've been taking part in a few of the challenges as well, from what I'm led to believe. I know there was one called a bin challenge now. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say how that went. I'm gonna let the viewers actually see that. So we're gonna see an effort by Natalia first of all. Let's see if she's successful. And then we're gonna have a look at your effort and let's see if you're <laughs> successful, Aaron. So here's the bin challenge. Three. I want to speak now to Aaron Mulholland. That's the second Aaron who's joined us tonight. Aaron, first of all, welcome to the show once again. You're a bit of a university student, so some people will say these guys don't do much work anyway, but maybe <laughs> you'd like to defend that. I would like to defend that. I'm studying health, physical activity and sport in Stromalis at the minute. And uh, Obviously, with the COVID crisis, it's a bit up in the air because there's no sport on for us to 
actually work with, so it's quite difficult to get my degree under wraps on that front. What year are you actually in? Second year. Okay, so you're enjoying it so far anyway? Oh, I do. I really, really enjoy it. Yeah, something I love doing. And what's the long-term plan? Have you thought ahead of yourself yet? Well, I had thought I'd been a teacher, but I'm not sure that's on the cards. The minute. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing the number of people who change their the, the seasons when they get to university. Uh, you obviously you play a bit of hockey as well. I understand from, from what Donald yes. tells me. So who, who yes. you playing hockey for? I'm playing hockey for Armagh Hockey Club at the moment. Okay. So it's quite a quite a track, but I love it. So. <laughs> Mul multi sport facility. We're gonna. I also heard from Donna that you're a bit of a, a free kick specialist, a bit of a Ronaldo sort of free kick from what I'm led to believe. Is that right? <laughs> well, I'm on the set pieces anyway, so you can judge that for yourself. <laughs> well, well, have a look at one of your free kicks now and let the viewers judge up for themselves. <laughs> so here's one of Aaron Mahon's great free kicks from last season. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, Charlotte Gill's next on our hit list. So, Charlotte, once again, welcome to Lockdown. Uh, I understand you're actually an e-commerce manager for Asda. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. That must be a bit of a mad job to be in at this moment in time. I would think it's been it's been pretty nuts. Um, I don't think when we started seeing like all the orders and stuff got, we didn't actually realise what it was, yeah. and then eventually. You know, they started realizing what was going on in the world, and everybody's just gone a bit crazy since we're doing like double the sales what we would normally do. Okay, and obviously, so, I know Asda, I know it's not your department, but obviously, the social distancing is a big thing as well. Are most people, you know, going along with that properly, or do they get the odd grumpy customer? What's the position there? Fuck, you get a, you get the odd grumpy customer, but I think generally across the board, um, everybody's quite aware of it. Um, especially more since they've started introducing one way systems. Um, and every day you go in and there's something been updated. You know yourselves from watching the news. There's something new comes up every day. And something new gets introduced. But I'd say across the board, everybody sticks to it pretty well. Yeah, well, that's that's good to hear from that sort of viewpoint. Uh, understand you're a bit of a decent footballer. Were you managers player of the year last year? Is that right? I was, yeah. <laughs> How did you manage to achieve that title? I don't really know. I think I just was doing a bit of sweet talking to the Donna. And, uh... <laughs> I think she uh, had arrived in time for once <laughs> all year. <laughs> yeah, that was what I was. <laughs> and I understand you're doing a bit, of a, ba a bit of baking, extra baking over the course of this break. You learn how to, to bake. Is that the, the scenario? Yeah, I've had, I've had a few disasters, but... Um, most of it's gone all right. It seems to take me a long time to make something that says it only takes two hours to do and I'm still in the kitchen five hours later. You're not the only one to take that up. I think quite a few people have taken that up as part of the challenge. So there's going to be a lot of cakes out there once this whole yep. thing is done. Some of all these clubs. You took part in the Keep You Up Challenge at the club. We've got a bit of a video of that. So we're going yeah, to that as try well. to. We're going to look at a couple of the girls doing the Keep You Up. The first one's yourself and then we'll follow it on with somebody else as well. Coming back to you now, Donna, just to sort of uh, round up the show, I understand it as well as obviously all the usual sort of fitness things. I think Jen and so forth has been doing a lot of fitness work for you, but you've been doing a lot of team morale building things as well. So what sort of things have you, have you been involved in? I think I think the girls obviously want to keep in touch with each other um, and try to keep the positivity going, not knowing whether when the league or whether it will start this season. So, you know, the toilet, the toilet roll challenge was the first it became a big thing in social media with other um, sporting um, professionals doing it. So we did that and then we did the Keep You Up Challenge. And I think the Toy World Challenge, we might have challenged 22nd Ladies and then they challenged someone else. Um, and then um, we've done some funny TikToks. Um, we've done some sort of Keep You Up and bin challenges and toe taps. So yeah, we've just we've been trying to... In terms of the TikToks, you sent me a couple of those over. Now, he's been trying to reenact some sort of scenes from famous movie scenes and famous footballing events. So I've seen one, that, actually, I'm going to let the viewers see in a wee minute, one of Harry Potter on the broomstick, which is quite interesting. But the second one is one of the Aguero moment from Manchester City, if you must <laughs> have to say. I haven't watched it. I don't think I'll ever be able to watch another TikTok video in my life. I don't know where that one came from. But it's it's, all about, yeah. I think it's about timing and... 
Well, I don't want to say it again either. Okay, well, <laughs> unfortunately, you have no choice. I'm going, to let, I'm going to let the viewers see it. It only has to go out. If I can see it, anybody else can see it. So here's a quick look at those two TikTok videos. <laughs> enough for the three points. Manchester City are still alive here. Balotelli, Aguero! Uh, Donna, just before we do go, I know you've done a little bit of yourself. You want to lead by example. You've been doing some sort of two two tap challenge or whatever it is. So tap talk us through that there. How did you manage to do that? Oh, uh, well, I was getting a bit bored, I think. <laughs> and let's just face it, I'm not the most skillful, probably. Coach or manager ever, so um, no, like right the back doing some sort of football tennis against the wall, and that will do the 20 second toe tap challenge. I don't think anybody's really won apart from me. What do you think, girl? Just did she do a good job at it, or can you do better? No, she's done all right. Did all right. Did you do <laughs> <laughs> Let's get your videos in and let's see if you can beat. Was it 54 and 24? 20, what was it? 20 seconds. 54. 20 seconds to do 54 yeah. off them. That's not too bad. You were near the breath by the end of it, but the good news is you got to get it the other end. Turn the sound off. <laughs> That's it. Listen, ladies, thank you very, very much for joining us here in this uh, third edition of Lockdown. I really appreciate you taking the time to come in to speak to us this evening. And I wish you well, obviously, during this period. And hopefully, it, We'll get, we'll get back on the pitch sooner rather than later for everybody's sake. So thanks once again for joining us this evening. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, bye. Bye. So that completes today's show. Massive thank you to the girls from Antrim Rovers for taking their time out to take part in today's show. And as usual, if you or your club would like to get involved, just drop us a line on the email address now shown. That's 1880video at gmail.com. Or get in touch with us through Facebook. I want to only be too glad to get you involved in a future episode of the show. In the meantime, folks, just please stay safe, stay home, and I will see you all again soon.